Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to try to put together a $78 gaming PC. Now, a little bit of a backstory here before we get started. This is actually being put together for my son's best friend. They play a lot of Minecraft and Roblox, and the problem is... He doesn't have a computer, he doesn't have an Xbox or anything like that, he's been using an Amazon Fire 7 tablet. And recently he cracked the screen on it, but either way, it was very slow in the first place. It's got 1 gig of RAM with a quad-core 1.2 or 1.5 gigahertz CPU in it. A lot of the stuff he wants to run just won't install on that unit. So I hopped on eBay and found the cheapest setup that I could. Now what I have here is a Dell Optiplex 3020 with an i3-4170, 8 gigs of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. For 50 US dollars, free shipping in the United States. I couldn't pass it up, and if this doesn't work out, then I'll turn it into something else. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of these little Optiplexes. The 3010s and the 3020s can be picked up for dirt cheap, and I think I got a pretty decent deal on this one. It does have built-in Intel HD 4600 graphics, but I also did a search for a GT730, and I was able to pick this one up here for $28 free shipping. It's got 1 gig of GDDR5 RAM, Definitely not the fastest GPU in the world, but for the price here, I think we could put together a pretty decent little low-end gaming PC. Now, before I give this over to him, I will be doing a full emulation test video. I'm really interested to see how this performs, and I got a good feeling it's going to do a pretty good job with a lot of the stuff we like to play. But for this video, we're going to be sticking strictly to PC gaming because I'm really interested to see how the $78 PC is going to perform. Now, I did want to get the GT730 2GB model with GDDR5, but it's double the price of this one that I picked up. Like I said, I paid $28 for the one gigabyte model, and I was trying to keep the cost down as much as possible. Yes, there are a thousand different combinations we could have come up with, but at 78 bucks, I think this will perform pretty well. So inside of here, we do have two four gigabyte sticks that looks like they're mix matched, but that'll be fine there. Now this whole setup is going to be running off a Western Digital 500 gigabyte mechanical drive. And if you do something like this, I would recommend adding at least a 128 gigabyte boot drive because booting this up off that mechanical drive with Windows 10 is going to be painfully slow. But it will work and we've kept the cost down by not having to add an extra hard drive or an SSD. I'm going to go ahead and slam this thing back together and then we'll get into some testing. But I do want to mention, if I was building this for myself, I probably still would have bought this i3 model, given that it was only $50. But for the GPU, I would have added a GT1030. And I did look around on eBay trying to find a cheap GT1030. Unfortunately, they're still around $70 used, or you can pick one up new for around $90 or even $85 some places. But if you have been looking at getting one of these cheap GT730s, make sure you get the GDDR5 version. It's much faster than the GDDR4 version, and the same thing goes for the GT1030. Make sure it's GDDR5. So I've got everything put back together. The GT730 fits in here nicely. Around the back, we have plenty of I.O. for a little machine like this. Now it's time to get into testing. This did come pre-installed with Windows 10, so there's really not much I need to do except for install some games. All right, so here we are. We have that i3-4170 at 3.7 gigahertz. This is a dual-core CPU with four threads. 8 gigs of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM, and the NVIDIA GeForce GT730 1 gigabyte model. Now as this goes, I did overclock it, and it's going to stay that way. I went up from the stock 902 megahertz to 1152. I just overclocked with Afterburner. This will start up every time the PC is booted up. So I've overclocked the core clock by 250 megahertz and the memory clock by 200. I did try to go to 300, but I got some crashing, so this seems pretty stable. Since this is such a low-end build, I wanted to start out easy here. Overwatch is a very well-optimized game and works on lower-end hardware quite well. We're at low settings, 1080p, and I'm getting an average of 72 FPS. And personally, on a system like this, I would have V-Sync on just so we could hit that 60 FPS mark, but this is more than playable on this machine. Next up, we have CSGO. This game is just great for low-end or older hardware. 1080p, medium settings, and I probably could have bumped this up to high with no issues at all, but we're sitting at around 102 to 103 FPS average, which is really great for a system like this. Oh. 
Next up, we have one of my favorites. This is OG Skyrim. I also tested remastered, but at 1080p, you're only gonna be doing about 30 FPS, even on low settings. So with the original version, medium settings, 1080p, you'll get a constant 60 FPS. It runs great. I know this is an older game, but it's still a really great game. And since this PC was pretty much put together for Minecraft and Roblox, I figured I'd test out Minecraft here. Now, most of the kids these days are running the Microsoft version, and I know the person that this system will be going to is using the Microsoft version of Minecraft, and we're getting a constant 60 here with 24 chunks. Here's Rocket League, 1080p, medium settings, and for the medium settings it's set to performance, but we're getting well over 100 FPS, so Rocket League is fully playable on a machine like this. Moving up a little bit to Dauntless, now I originally tested this at 1080p low settings and I was getting around 34 to 35 average FPS. I wanted to see if we could take it to 60 and unfortunately even at low settings 720p we can't hit 60. I do have the rendering resolution set to 100% and even with that all the way down at 720p we still can't net 60 FPS out of it. And to tell you the truth I'd rather have that set at 100%. If you've ever messed around with this game and dropped that rendering resolution down the game looks horrible. But given that this whole PC was put together for under $80, I'd say this is pretty decent performance. This one was actually surprising to me. I know this is an older game, but we have GTA 5 normal settings 1080p. We're getting an average of around 54 to 55 FPS, but when we got a lot of explosions going on, it does drop down to the 40s. Still, I was pretty impressed by how this performed on this low-end machine, so what I wanted to do was see if we could at least get a constant 60 out of it by going down to 720p. We're still sitting at normal settings, and by the end of this, I was getting an average of around 66 FPS. So with older and low-end titles, performance on this machine really isn't that bad given the price of the whole setup. But when we move up to newer and harder to run games, this thing falls on its face, and I knew that was going to be the case going into this. We have 1 gig of VRAM, we're using an old GT730, but I still wanted to test out some newer games. So here we have Doom Eternal, low settings, 720p, and I'm getting an average of 19 FPS. Yes, there are ways to get better frame rates out of this, but this is just with the stock settings turned down as much as I could. Another one I wanted to test was Far Cry 5, so here we have it. Low settings, 720p. Average frame rate, 20 FPS with a minimum of 17. Even at the lowest settings, this game is unplayable. Same pretty much goes for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We got an average of 18, a minimum of 10, and a maximum of 32. 720p, low settings. So in the end, this machine's definitely not going to win any performance awards, but it performed much better than I thought it would in a lot of the stuff that I tested. As you saw, newer AAA games are pretty much a no-go on here, low settings 720p. You're going to get around 15 to, let's say, even 20 FPS in some of the newer games. And after all, that's definitely not playable. But if you're on a super tight budget and you like playing esports games and you really don't mind going down to 720p, I mean, sometimes you got to take what you can get. Or if you're looking to build a low cost machine for a kid who definitely won't mind playing at 720p, 30 FPS, this is actually a pretty good deal. Now you can find these on eBay for super cheap. I picked mine up for 50, you can get the i5s for around 60 and I probably should have done that. But I saw that $49.99 price tag with free shipping and I just hit buy it now. Again, with those GPUs, if you're looking to get one of these GT730s, make sure it's the GDDR5 version. You don't want to get that GDDR4 version. You'll have much worse performance than you just saw in this video. Now, I definitely want to test out some emulation on this machine, so keep an eye on the channel. I'll have a full video coming up. 
We're going to test out some GameCube, some Wii, some Dreamcast, some Sega Saturn, some 3DS. We'll throw some PS2 in there and a bunch more. But that's it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave a few eBay links in the description. Stuff that's very similar here. Something might be a little more pricey. But if you keep your eye out, you can build something for around the same price. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.